This is not clickbait. I have actually and officially been banned from a Harley Davidson dealership. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Look, I'm just gonna jump right into this. Uh, this is following up on the last video that I made, the Harley Davidson 2023 uh, year model lineup, massive dealer markup, buyer beware. Uh, thank you to so many of you that have checked out that video and left comments uh, on the video. Um, man, I was not expecting what was gonna happen you know, the, the 24, 48 hours uh, after that, because I'm an adult and I'm not a child. Um, but just to inform you, again, not clickbait. So Josh texted me and informed me that the dealership that we went to that day when we filmed the initial video uh, has informed him that we are banned from that dealership. Uh, I'm not even, I don't even want to give them credit at all by naming them in this video. If you want to know who it is and you haven't seen the other video, uh, make sure you go check out this video right here uh, and it will explain everything. But yes, they have banned us from the dealership. And, and I think me specifically, because I think Josh is old friends with the sales manager there. And that's all good. Again, our purpose was not to be negative. Um, it turned negative whenever we were not allowed to film and do what we came there to do. And then knowing the reason being the massive dealer markup. So look, I'm going to get a little bit more into that, but before I get too far into this, I, I want to make a, a, a broad statement here, but something that's important. I in no way in the last video or in this video, want to imply that I have anything against Harley Davidson as a company or as a brand uh, or their motorcycles. I love Harley Davidson. I'm wearing a Harley Davidson hat right now. I've got a Street Glide special behind me and a Pan America special behind me. I own two Harley Davidsons. I don't have a problem or an issue with Harley Davidson as a company. What I'm starting to find is that I'm having major issues with Harley Davidson dealerships. Now, while I say that, generally speaking, let me be very specific. There are tons and tons and tons of great Harley Davidson dealers out there. Dealers that are not putting dealer markup, insane $7,000, $10,000 dealer markup on their motorcycles. They are out there. There are still Harley Davidson, good Harley Davidson dealers out there that are focused on the community, focused on the, uh, the customer, both the core customer and the new customer because they want to make sure that a new customer stays a customer and becomes a core customer for years and years and years down the road. And they understand that it's not about making a quick buck right now. It's about not selling this one bike. It's about selling 20 bikes over a 30, 40, 50 year career or it being in business or the lifetime of a rider. So I'm not saying this is all Harley Davidson dealers. This is from, unfortunately though, from reading some of you guys' contents and we're, uh, comments in the last video, we're gonna get to some of those uh, as well. One of the things that I'm finding, it seems to be a very repetitive story that most of you are finding these sort of situations whenever you're walking into your local Harley Davidson dealerships all over the country. You're finding excessive dealer markup. You're finding, like I, I put in the comments of the last video, that I swear a lot of these dealers got together and sent all of their salespeople to some sort of a sales seminar or something because it is so high pressure now. You, you, you get on the lot, you get to the dealership, and you're swarmed by five people. There's I, I, and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe maybe somebody somewhere along the line has told them that that works. That never works for me. I don't need to be sold anything. I have, and like many of you in your comments, I have done my research. I know what I'm there at the dealership looking for. I know about the motorcycles. I don't need you to sell me the motorcycle. The only thing that's going to sell me is the fact that I go see the motorcycle in person, I ride it, I decide if I actually want it or not. There's nothing that a salesperson can say or do or tell me that's going to make the difference on whether or not I make a purchase or not. 
But I will tell you, one of the things that makes it very easy these days is walking up and seeing the hang tags on the handlebars of these motorcycles and finding the high dealer markup. Now look, I understand that this dealership got upset at what I had to say. If I were in their shoes, I would probably get upset too. But I was taught when I was a kid, and I don't know about you, but my mama always said that when somebody got defensive, it's because they're trying to cover something up. That's the way I feel about this situation. It's almost like the Wizard of Oz. They're, they're pissed because I opened up the curtains and let you see the wizard behind the curtain. And the fact of the matter is that they do not want you knowing before you get there that there is dealer markup on these bikes. Why? Because they know that probably anybody that is serious about buying a motorcycle, that's going to piss them off. And then it puts you into a situation. I was reading a comment in the comment sections of the last video, and they were talking about negotiating, using the dealer markup to negotiate down. We shouldn't have to negotiate down to MSRP. MSRP should be the starting point, and we negotiate down from there to try to, good, to get a good deal. And while we're on that topic, why is it such a bad thing these days to want to get a good deal? Look, I work very hard for my money. I've worked hard for it for 30-something years, just the way that I know you do. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. If you're an electrician, if you're a barista at Starbucks, if you're a golf pro, if you're a golf caddy, if you're in construction, if you sell cars, it doesn't matter what you do for a living. It doesn't make or say anything negative about you that we want to get a deal or we want to feel like we've gotten a good value, especially these days. If you want my money, you're going to have to make me feel the value in exchange. And that's what we're talking about here. Like I said in the last video, if you haven't done the math, you haven't done the numbers, it's worth looking at because at $7,000 that it was on this low rider ST, $7,000 in negative equity. If you finance that through Eagle Bank, which I'm going to come back to this point in just a second. If you finance that through Eagle Bank, you are already financing $7,000 of negative equity onto that motorcycle. It is not worth what you're paying for it the moment you drive it off the lot. Here's the other thing I don't understand. If, and if I do have a bone to pick with Harley Davidson corporate, I don't know, I should have researched it and I didn't because I wanted to get this video out after being banned from Harley Davidson. Um, I Here's the thing. I don't know what exactly the relationship is between Harley Davidson and Eagle Bank. So if you guys know, please put it down in the comments. I've always assumed that Harley Davidson owns Eagle Bank. Okay, well, let's say they do. Why in the world would Harley Davidson and their bank be willing to finance 30% more than the bike's value? Okay, that doesn't work with anything else. It doesn't work with homes, right? You, you, you can't go and, and them give you 30% more. You have to pay 20% down or 3.5% down. You have to pay something down to make up for that. They never finance, very rarely, 100%. Sometimes it seems when you get into cars and motorcycles, you can finance a little bit over. But basically, if you're financing through Eagle Bank, they are knowingly upfront financing 30% negative equity into that motorcycle. So one might could say it's collusion. Look here, now I'm gonna piss off Harley Davidson corporate. That is not my goal. My goal with the initial video is to bring all of this to light. I hear a lot of people rumble about it. I hear a lot of people talk about it, but I don't see a lot of people putting their face on camera or getting really public about this sort of thing. And I think you and me and the, all of us as individuals, as consumers, we've got to stand up. We've got to stand up to, to this, as, as dumb as it sounds, we've got to stand up to this. We've got to stand up to the rising price of gas. And, and maybe there's nothing we can do about it, except we can be vocal. We can be heard. Why your gas station down the road? If it didn't get its tanks filled overnight, why can gas prices go up tomorrow when they paid the same amount that's in the tank already? They're just charging you more for it. I guess it's keeping them honest, or at least trying to keep them honest. Do I think for a second that any of these dealers that are charging massive and extraordinary and ridiculous 
dealer markup. Do I think that, that any of these videos that I will make on this subject are going to make them change their mind? No, because we're talking about the almighty dollar. We're not talking about community. We're not talking about what's right and treating people right and giving people a value. Being so confident in the product that you're selling that you don't have to mark it up to make your money. It's so much in demand that people are going to come in the front door and they're going to buy it anyway because of the product. Not because of some falsified sense of demand or speciality that you have made this product out to be. And I think it's a real problem. Now, diving into directly about this specific dealership, am I upset that they've banned me? Fuck no. Do I care? Fuck no. What do I think about them? Fuck you. I would never buy anything from your dealership to begin with. You're shady. You're dishonest. And you don't give a fuck about anybody else but yourself. So you can ban me all day long, all you want. I was never planning on stepping foot in your dealership ever again. So if it makes you feel like, oh, we're mad, we're pissed off, I tell you what, we're going to ban you. It's like banning me from getting a root canal. It's not something I was planning on doing anyway. But I tell you what, you keep doing you, boo. Let's find out what happens. Let's find out what happens when enough people hear what's going on and enough people get fed up and enough people get sick and tired of being taken advantage of and not valued as a true, real, valuable customer to your business. Ban me all you want. I'm gonna be right here riding my motorcycles, speaking the truth as I find it and as I see it. So, I told you we were going to read some of your comments. I do want to do that. Let's take a look at those. Uh, warning, I did not bring my glasses. Uh, and it's a little bit blurry, but I'm going to do my best here. Roland Jessup says, It's embarrassing as a Harley Davidson consumer that we pay too much for their motorcycles. The salespeople are experts in selling bikes with huge markups. And like me having a very slim chance of getting a favorable deal, everyone says a big HD tax to get into riding a Harley. Everyone pays a big HD tax to get into riding a Harley. And, and you're exactly right. I mean, that's, that's initially what it is. It's almost like a cover charge. You're having to pay this over and above amount just to become a part of the community and a part of the lifestyle. Uh, Jerry Miller says, same in the Midwest. A corporate uh, stealership, which I like that. That's a good one. A corporate stealership here bought out a mom and pop establishment uh, from the 70s and uh, never hung pricing cards uh, on them since. Uh, they now put crazy markups on everything. There are four other Harley dealers within 60 miles and some still hang pricing cards on the handlebars. Even they still mark up MSRP, but only around $500. And, and look, I'll, I'll go on the record here and say that I, I don't believe that any of the the markup is, is right. I, I just don't. Um, look, I understand when we're going through times of COVID and businesses were hurting, Look, you might could even make some sort of a case that they're trying to keep people employed and, and that's a good thing. And so we're going to have to charge a little bit extra, a little bit of a premium so that we can keep our staff. That's absolutely, I can understand that. I don't like it, but I can understand it. When you walk into a dealership and they've got 350 bikes and they've got a, a sales staff of 17 and they've got $7,000 markup on their bike, I, I don't know about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jimmy Mark says the markup is real. When I bought my first Harley Davidson, my wife said, damn, it felt like we bought a car. When I bought my second one, I didn't go through a dealer and came out great. There are other ways to purchase motorcycles besides going through a dealer. But no, that's a fact. One of the things that I hit on in my video, and I think Josh hit on in his video as well, um, is that when you're charging, you know, 30% of the bike, uh, the bike's MSRP on top of it as a dealer markup, and you're looking at a $22,000 motorcycle, then you add the dealer markup, the tags, title, and license, you're looking at more like $32,000, $33,000. That's not a weekend toy or a weekend hobby anymore. Now you're in the realm of this is transportation that I have to, and, and need to get back and forth to work. So 
it, it, and, and that, that puts a lot of people out. Uh, because most people, I go out on a limb, I don't know most people, but I would say that most people don't have thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 laying around to sink into something that they're going to ride occasionally or on the weekends. So I think that's a, that's a very good point. Uh, XG Rider says, what do I love about Harley Davidson is the old school looks, uh, badass, the sound, Sportster 48, what I have now, the soft tail street bob, breakout 114, the best looks, and uh, customize in my opinion. Thanks for the comment, man. I, I, look, I love the sound of my Harleys. I, again, I love Harley Davidson. I'm not trying to say anything negative about them. TM says the only positive thing that I can say about that specific uh, Harley Davidson dealership based on personal experience is that they do have an excellent parts department and uh, several excellent service technicians uh, and service riders. I would never ever buy a Harley there. Their massive, huge, and sheer geared markups are totally off the charts and beyond insane. I do recommend buying Harley motorcycles from Bartels Harley Davidson in Marina Del Rey and Laidlaw's Harley Davidson in Baldwin Park. I've, I've never been to Laidlaw. My, Matt lives here close to me, uh, but I've never been to their dealership, but I've only ever heard good things. I've never been to Bartles. Gonna have to go check them out as well. Let me preface, what, or let me just say, the specific Harley Davidson dealership that we're talking about, I have used their service department before and I have bought parts there. Matter of fact, I just bought the side mounting hardware for my Panniers for the Pan America at that dealership about three weeks ago. I was very, very pleased with the, the customer service that I received through the parts department and the service department. I had a question. The guy that was helping me in service was very informative. I didn't like everything he had to say, but that's not his fault. It's more of a Pan America problem and frustrations with dealing with that. But they were both great. It's only the sales aspect of the dealership that I've ever had any issue with uh, whatsoever. So uh, I, I will agree with that. Uh, on, on parts department, five stars all the way across the board. Unfortunately, the sales side of it makes you not want to do business there. And if you haven't heard, I can't do business there because I'm banned from their dealership. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Jeep Med said, I agree about the dealer marks up, markups. I had two Harleys, ended up buying an Indian, no markup over MSRP. Um, I have noticed that. Um, I'm actually looking at a, a 2023 Indian Pursuit Dark Horse Premium right now. Um, I think we might add it to the garage. I don't think I'm going to get rid of the street glide, but um, I am taking a look at the Indians. And the dealership that I'm talking with right now uh, is uh, North County Indian. Uh, and I believe they also own uh, Biggs Harley Davidson. And from what I'm, it, there's no markup on the Indians and I don't think they mark up their Harley Davidsons either. Uh, and I've got some good friends who are really good friends with that dealership and just praise the customer service. And the interaction that I've had with them so far has been 100%. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 5K, mar uh, who is this? This is uh, Socks GoPro says 5K markup for red paint and anniversary badges. Sweet deal. I guess my red 2012 Deluxe is suddenly worth thousands more too then. Yeah, that's what you would think, right? But wrong. And I actually replied uh, to his comment, just being a little cheeky. Uh, I said, you know that red and anniversary badge back, uh, bikes ride better and uh, come with less mechanical issues. Uh, so anyway, there's a few of your guys' comments. Look, I could go on and on and on. There are literally, I don't know, hundreds of comments on here. And maybe... I don't know. Maybe we turn this into kind of a series and we we check back in with what's going on with these dealerships from time to time. Um, and I will, you know, continue to pop some of you guys' uh, comments up there. Again, I appreciate you taking the time to watch that video. And, and more importantly, I appreciate your time that it takes to go in and make a comment or like the video or subscribe to the channel. I, I sincerely do. I appreciate every single one of you. Again, my, the purpose of... The previous video was not to be negative. The purpose of this video is not to be negative. But based on the number of you guys that are watching the previous video, the views have skyrocketed um, in the last 24 hours. Uh, the comments as well. 
I, I felt like I, I wanted to get back on camera and explain what had happened, that I have, in fact, been banned from that dealership, um, which is fine uh, by me. Look, it's not going to take my enjoyment of riding my Harley Davidsons away. It's not going to take away the enjoyment I have of riding my Harley Davidsons. But what it does do is start to plant a little bit of a seed of doubt about the brand. I can have great experiences on mine, but what happens when I go to buy another motorcycle? Maybe I buy this Indian, maybe I buy another Ducati, maybe I buy something else, who knows? But I can tell you this throughout this journey. One of the things that is going to be more important to me from now on than the motorcycle I want is how I'm being treated as the customer. If you want to take advantage of me, you can forget earning my business. If you want to put dealer markup on your vehicles, you can forget earning my business. Earn my business by being straightforward, truthful, honest, and operate with integrity. It's not that hard to do. Guys, thank you for joining me for another video. This turned out to be way longer than I thought it would be. And I know not a lot of people make it to the end of the video. So if you're still here, thank you very much. Again, if you like this sort of content, we've got some really cool things coming. Uh, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you like the video and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Guys, again, thank you for being here. Don't get taken advantage of. We'll see you out on the streets. Be safe.